Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English and Chinese with subtitles in Arabic, Olaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Russian, Spanish, and Thai. Quý khán giả thương mến, tôi là Thanh Phong từ Vũng Tàu, Âu Lạc Hài Hòa, còn được biết là Việt Nam. Dân tộc Gia Rai là một trong 54 dân tộc anh em cùng sinh sống trên quê hương Âu Lạc yêu dấu. Người Gia Rai rất đơn thuần và ưa thích múa hát. Tiếng đàn tơ rưng, đàn tân nâng, đàn clong phút gắn liền với đời sống tinh thần của dân tộc Gia Rai. Và đặc biệt hơn, tiếng còng, tiếng chiên tân bừng rồn rã, còn là đặc trưng của núi rừng cao nguyên, bạc ngàn hùng vĩ. Người dân Gia Rai và tất cả chúng tôi cầu chúc quý khán giả thuần thiết được vui hưởng bầu không khí trong lành từ núi rừng xanh mát. Chúng tôi vui mừng giới thiệu đến quý vị đôi nét về đất nước Âu Lạc, Việt Nam yêu kiều. Người dân chúng tôi cảm tạ Thượng Đế về sự hiện diện an lành của quý vị. Trong hơn ba thập niên, Ngài Thánh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã soi sáng thế giới bằng giáo lý thiên liêng, là một vị minh sư toàn giác, Ngài truyền đạt pháp môn quán âm cho những ai khao khát tức khắc tìm lại thượng đế tánh bên trong, hầu đạt được giải thoát vĩnh hằng trong kiếp này khỏi vòng sinh tử luân hồi. Pháp môn quán âm đã được tu tập bởi tất cả các vị minh sư như Đức Phật, Chúa Giêsu, nhà tiên tri Mohammed, hòa bình đến với ngài và đạo sư Nana. Ngài đã nhấn mạnh nếu chúng ta luôn tưởng nhớ thượng đế phục vụ tha nhân một cách vô ngã và tuân theo luật vũ trụ, chúng ta sẽ đạt được tiềm năng tối thượng của con người và thật sự hiểu được mục đích của mình trên địa cầu này. Ngài Thánh Hải Vô Thượng Sư là một tấm gương sống phi thường về lòng từ bi. Ngài thường xuyên cứu trợ bằng hiện vật và tài chính, đồng thời gửi gắm tình thương cho những người tị nạn, vô gia cư, nạn nhân thiên tai và những người cần được trợ giúp khác. Vào năm 2006, Ngài đã nhận giải Gucci Hòa Bình, được xem như giải Nobel Hòa Bình ở phương Đông, và được vinh danh suốt nhiều năm với rất nhiều giải thưởng khác, cùng những lời ngợi ca về hoạt động nhân đạo và thiện nguyện tuyệt vời của Ngài. Là tiếng nói chân thành cho các bạn thú xinh đẹp, Ngài khuyến khích lối dinh dưỡng thuần thực vật, hòa bình và bác ái, và những viễn cảnh tươi sáng với sự thức tỉnh của nhân loại về sự thiên liêng của muôn loài, một thế giới thuần chay bình yên và huy hoàng, nơi các bạn thú và con người sống trong hạnh phúc hòa hợp. Những sáng kiến của Ngài nhằm phổ biến xu hướng thuần chay rất đa dạng, bao gồm phân phát tờ rơi lối sống mới, chuỗi nhà hàng thuần chay quốc tế Loving Hut, truyền hình vô thượng sư, cũng như trao đổi thường xuyên với quan chức chính phủ có tầm ảnh hưởng và nhà lãnh đạo giới truyền thông, cũng như tham gia các buổi hội thảo truyền hình về nhận thức của chúng ta đối với biến đổi khí hậu. Những nỗ lực của Ngài đã mang lại ảnh hưởng to lớn tới nhận thức toàn cầu về lối sống thân thiện với các bạn thú, và làm sao lối sống từ ái này có thể mang đến hòa bình trường tồn giữa các quốc gia 
đồng thời cứu địa cầu khỏi nạn biến đổi khí hậu. Qua nhiều năm, Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã du hành khắp thế giới, từ châu Mỹ đến châu Phi, từ châu Âu đến châu Đại Dương, và đã tổ chức hàng trăm buổi thuyết giảng trước công chúng cùng các đệ tử về nhiều chủ đề tâm linh. Hôm nay, chúng tôi hân hạnh được trình chiếu một trong những bài thuyết giảng sâu sắc với tự đề Sát sanh không bao giờ đúng, phần 1 của hai phần trên giữa thầy và trò, giảng bằng tiếng Anh và Trung Hoa vào ngày 25 tháng 7 năm 2009 tại Pháp. We should feel very lucky that we here, you know, still have water to drink. Oh my God, many countries in the world are short of water. Do you understand this? Just a basic thing. Nothing luxury. Water. Keep getting shorter and shorter every day. Can you imagine? Some people go even 10 plus kilometers every day just to get water to bring it back to their family. Truly, it's like that. In Africa, many countries are like that. And now in India and China, even America, many places became short of water. Basic necessity only. Why? Because they use up all the water from the river to divert it into, you know, big farm factory, yeah? You know, like animal farm factory. They have to use a lot of water to give the animals to drink. And then use water to grow the crops for the animals to eat. And uh, when they kill the animals, or before they kill the animals, they have to use water to clean their pens every day and wash it down into the stream. And when they kill the animals, they need a lot of water to clean up also. And when people eat it at home, they also use water again to clean it and to cook it. So there's no end. There was enough water for all of us, plus over for everyone. We began this industry of meat diet, then everything get worse. More hospital, more medicine, more sickness, yeah, more shortage of any kind, more temperature rise, and more suffering, yeah, more disasters, more hunger, more war. Some of the diseases related to meat consumption and or production. Fatal prion diseases transmissible through air or milk, rabies, anthrax, sleeping sickness, Q fever, norovirus, swine flu, Ebola restin virus. Cured meats and fish increase leukemia risk in children. Antibiotic resistant superbug infections and other dangerous bacteria strains. Blue tongue disease, E. coli, salmonella. Bird flu. Mad cow disease or Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease, 90% of the population at risk. Pig's disease or PMWS, listeriosis, shellfish poisoning, preeclampsia, Campylobacter, Clostridium difficile. Diseases hidden in healthy appearing livestock. Food poisoning, heart attack, kidney failure from toxic additives like melamine and clenbuterol. Some of the costs of meat eating. Infertility. Eating just one serving of meat per day increases the risk of women's infertility by 32%, with additional meat consumption increasing the risk. Heart disease. Over 17 million lives lost globally each year. Cost of cardiovascular disease is at least 1 trillion US dollars a year. Cancer. Increased childhood cancers and adult reproductive cancers from hormones in meat. Colon rectal cancer. Over 1 million new colon cancer patients diagnosed each year. More than 600,000 colon cancer-related mortalities annually. In the United States alone, colon cancer treatment costs about 6.5 billion US dollars. Millions of people are newly diagnosed with other meat-related cancers every year. Diabetes. 347 million people are affected worldwide. An estimated 174 billion US dollars spent each year on treatment in just the United States. Obesity. Worldwide, 1.6 billion adults are overweight with 400 million more who are obese. Costs 93 billion US dollars each year for medical expenses in the United States alone. At least 2.6 million people die annually from problems related to being overweight or obese. Environmental. Use up to 70% of clean water. 
pollute most of the water bodies, deforest the lungs of the earth, uses up to 43% of the world's cereal, uses up to 85% of the world's soy, cause world hunger and wars, 80% cause of global warming, plus more. Some of the costs of milk consumption, cowpox from milking cows, bacterial microbes, pesticides, and enzymes found in cheese derived from the inner stomach linings of other animals. Up to 80% of the calories in cheese are from pure fat. Breast, prostate, and testicular cancer from hormones present in milk. Listeria and Crohn's disease. Hormones and saturated fat lead to osteoporosis, obesity, diabetes, and heart disease, linked to higher incidences of multiple sclerosis classified as a major allergen, lactose intolerance, plus more. For help quitting, please visit the following websites. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash killers. So I guess even if you don't have any question of your spiritual practice or anything concerning your immediate family, you have to think of other people, no? If you want to ask questions, ask something useful for other people, not always thinking of yourself all the time, because we are interconnected. We can't live happily when we see somebody else suffering. Even before I was appointing practitioners, before I even took over this job, Whenever I see something on TV, like people suffer, animals suffer, or, you know, disasters, refugees, I couldn't bear it. I cry all the time. I still do now. But I have to shut it off sometimes in order to do my job. It's no good sitting there crying all the time and feeling sorry for people. We have to do something. That's why I told myself. Otherwise, I would cry myself to death, truly. I can't bear it, it's just too much. Too much, you know, wherever you look, it's full of suffering. Sometimes we just look on the TV and say, okay, 20 Iraqi blown up, you know, or uh, three American soldiers dies, or uh, 30,000 Pakistanis uh, wounded in the war, and then Afghanistan people uh, run, you know, because of the war, became refugees and all that. We just think, oh, it's a number. We feel like numbers, you know, 30, 20, 2, 5, 6, 100,000 even. But they're not just numbers. They're individuals who has families, who has friends, who have children, a husband and wife, who has love for their family, for their, you know, neighbors, for their country even. And they have this feeling. They have all this feeling, they have all this suffering. They cannot tell anyone because there's so much numbers, you know? And then people just push them around, or push them back, push them forth like a herd of sheep without considering individual uh, dignity and feeling of a human. It's also not to blame the people, anyone. It's just too many to handle individually, too many suffering, too many people to be treated like one single case, you know, face-to-face, -face, humanely or friendly. Too difficult, too much, too many to handle. And even the UN or the government do not have limitless personnel to take care of all these things. These come from nowhere, you know? Like people from the war, maybe they're victims, but the government did not prepare for the victims of the war. So they came from nowhere overnight. They have a lot of refugees. They can't even handle, yeah? Even the Red Cross and all that, or whatever the agency that took care of this matter, they also sometimes uh, short out personnel and they're overwhelmed, yes? Overwhelmed with work and with burdens, with demands. And this Refugees are people, they're not just a normal people, you know, that you can sit and reason with. They are traumatized. They have also psychological need. Very difficult. Not just like, okay, these are normal people, you're hungry, I give you some food and you're okay with it. It's not just that. 
the house has burnt down, yeah? the pets die in the war, the husband's gone, missing. The children lost legs and arms and they have no money because they run away from home empty-handed. These kind of people, they're not just normal like you and I sitting here and talking pretty, yeah? So it's very difficult even for the government or any charity to handle this situation. The best is we don't have any war. The best is we don't have any disaster and the best is we don't have any refugees, for example, huh? And we can do that by being more benevolent, yes? By live and let live, by creating peace. Then we will have peace. Peace has to be created in the home first, uh, from our table. That's why I have told you from beginning already, vegetarian diet, yeah? Five precepts, no killing. Even if people want to kill you, you don't kill them back. What's the use of that? Either you die or he die, yeah? Why make him die? Huh? Maybe let him live so that he can have more chance to know God. And you already knew God. Understand that? At least, huh? We have a refuge. He doesn't. He's ignorant. Well, that's my philosophy, but you know what I mean? It's, oh, you run away, huh? I run away. <laughs> In the beginning already, before, the vegetarian diet or vegan diet wasn't even in. People think, oh, a vegetarian, I must be crazy, you know? Yeah, when I was vegetarian, it was difficult to find anything to eat. Yeah, not, not long ago, a few decades ago only. People don't know what vegetarian is. Oh, at least, okay, if they're humane, they bring you a plate of salad and that's it. Okay, vegetarian, vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> and the only vegetarian that you can find anywhere is some salad and salt and white rice. <laughs> Well, at least you have something. When I was having vacation with my ex-husband, when we go somewhere, you know, he looks so desperate. I eat toast almost every day, toast and jam, you know, <laughs> almost every day, because I don't trust anything else. Sometimes you go in a restaurant, you ask for some vegetable, okay, they saute vegetable for you, but language problem, and they put, you know, pork oil or something in it. Yes. And you ask for a vegetable soup, and they put uh, meat uh, bouillon, meat broth into it. And sometimes I see some fat or some meat uh, swimming in there. I said, there's some meat in there, isn't it? He said, oh, just a little bit. <laughs> yeah? And when I was in India, even India, you know, the country that you trusted, you know, I thought, oh, it's all the saints there. You know, we think, oh, Sikamoni, Buddha, Romi, Kabir, you know, even Jesus went to India to study. It must be a holy country. There will be no problem. I asked for some fried rice. Couldn't afford anything else, to tell you the truth. You know, when I live in the front of the boat, you know, there's no boat roof, right in the pointed area, to sit there with the umbrella. So the rain don't bother me, yeah and covered with the sleeping bag. Couldn't afford to go inside the boat. No, so I asked for some fire rice, and he knows that I don't have much money. So I said, okay, and he put egg in it. I forgot to tell no egg. I just say fire rice, you know? Fire rice mean rice and oil, no? <laughs> I didn't ask for egg, so I thought he didn't put egg, but he thinks probably I'm poor, you know, so he just charitably put me half an egg in there. Yeah. Oh, so I said, so, so I, I did, there are some eggs in there. Oh, he said, oh, you don't like egg, huh? Okay, I, I take it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> How can you take scrambled eggs out of fried rice? Tell me, huh? The scrambled eggs, they make it even smaller bit than rice itself. So I think, in order to get all the eggs, grains out of the rice, you probably have to put it in a sip, you know, with the big holes and then run water on it. And then keep shaking until all the eggs gone and fry it again, no? <laughs> so I said, never mind, so I, I'm not really hungry, so don't worry about it. Yeah, that was India telling you. So actually, 
we are in much better position now, eh? Yeah. So I don't know why people don't just become all vegetarian, because at least we have something to eat, right? Think of all the billions of people who has nothing to eat at all. When I send somebody to go for disaster relief, huh? they bought just rice, oil, and salt, and some biscuits for children and all that, but rice, oil, and salt, that's all they ask for, and sugar. So they eat just rice and salt even, and they're happy already in that situation, in many situations. In some situations, people are just happy just to have rice and not salt even. So if the whole world goes vegan or vegetarian, that's nothing big deal, is it? Huh? We should be happy that we have things to eat, right? Soon we might not even have vegetables to eat. Some of the benefits of a vegetarian diet lowers blood pressure, lowers cholesterol levels, reduces type 2 diabetes, prevents stroke conditions, reverses atherosclerosis, reduces heart disease risk 50%, reduces heart surgery risk 80%, prevents many forms of cancer, stronger immune system, increases life expectancy up to 15 years, higher IQ, saves 70% of the total cost of 40 trillion US dollars for reducing global warming, uses four and a half times less land to grow food, conserves up to 70% clean water, saves 80% of the cleared Amazonian rainforest from animal grazing, a solution for world hunger, free up 3.4 billion hectares of land, free up 760 million tons of grain every year, half the world's grain supply, consumes one third fossil fuels of those used for meat production, reduces pollution from untreated animal waste, maintains cleaner air, saves four and a half tons of emissions per US household per year, stop 80% of global warming, plus more. Save your life, be veg, go green. For more urgent information, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash be veg. I suggest that if you plant organic vegetables in your house or in your garden or in your farm, you plant more and more those that need little water. Fruit trees, nut trees, these are full of vitamin and full of nutrients that you can eat all the time. Yes? And you plant beans, yeah? Cassava, those things don't need even water. And even if you plant rice, you choose the rice that grow on dry land. There are two kinds of rice. When I was young, I remember in Vietnam, they plant rice in wet land and also rice on just a dry land. So we can do that, huh? Plant more you know, white rice with the dry land instead. Plant a lot of beans. Even if you just eat beans and rice and salt, that's plenty of protein and nuts and fruit. Ah, oh, lot of food already. Lots already. Yes? There's no need to eat so much to survive, truly. There's so much hoo-boo about protein and a lot of stuff. It is no need. It's no need, truly. Jesus said, man doesn't live on bread alone. It's truly like that. Recently, I asked this Supreme Master Television to show you people who don't even eat, yes? I don't tell you to go home and starve to death. <laughs> it's not. Maybe not everyone is suitable for a breatharian diet, huh? Maybe not. But we could uh, economize, you know, our food. We don't have to eat such a big meal every day. We don't have to eat everything every day. Most of Indian people, they eat their staple food, like eat rice and dice. You know, dice means the mung beans, dausana. They cook in uh, soupy water with some curry stuff, yeah? And they put it on white rice 
They eat almost like that all the time. And they look healthy to me, strong, happy people. Because most of them have faith in God, you know, from childhood already. So faith can also sustain us. Eh? Of course, if you have it, you can afford it, then you eat. If not, then don't worry, just eat anything. You know, anything that grows, that is eatable, yes. If the birds can eat, you can. That's the test. <laughs> if you go out in the wild sometimes and if you don't have things to eat and you see the birds, it's something that means it's edible. So every time, like if we eat something and we feel not enough, it's not that, it's enough. It should be okay. Yeah? It should be okay. That was a very interesting thing. One doctor, you know, a medical doctor, she had gone without food for a long time. Her name is Barbara Moore, Dr. Barbara Moore. She lives in our time. She just died in the 70s. Car accident. Somebody hit her on the street. Otherwise, maybe she's still alive. Hmm. Okay, for example, and she has been proving it on herself, you know? She tried all that on herself first, and it worked. Yes. So tomorrow you watch it. I don't want to tell you everything. It's like spoiling the end of the thriller film, huh? Hmm. Always put others before us, then we know what to do, okay? Don't always ask me to bless you, hmm? Or don't even ask God always to bless you. Don't always ask heaven to bless us. We have to make heaven to bless others, hmm? Heaven is that, what we make. If not, then everywhere is hell, truly. In this world, it's easier to practice and improve because, because there are suffering people, there are suffering animals, there are suffering situations, there are imperfect situations that will touch our compassion that we awaken our merciful heart, and then we can bring it out, improve it, improve the situation, help others. And that's how we create heaven. That's how we say heaven will be on earth. In the Bible, there is a prayer saying that, hallow is thy name in heaven as well as on earth. So we have to bring that to earth. We are here to do it, yes? If we think we're the children of God, then we have to bring God's love here. We have to make heaven here. We can't just keep waiting for heaven to appear or ask heaven to help us. Or we do, of course, when in time of need and emergency, in truly, or we can pray, okay, help me today for meditation or to do some smooth stuff. Of course, we can pray that, but not always that not always about us, yes? It has to be about other people as well. It has to be. Otherwise, we're going nowhere with our spiritual practice. We have to think of the other end, okay? Not on this end. Yeah. For example, when you talk on the telephone, you talk for yourself to listen? Huh? Or you talk so that the other, the end of the line, listen to you? Huh? Which, who listen? The other end, right? When you talk to your friend, huh? you talk loud, you talk clear, so that your friend at the other end of the telephone can hear you, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. You have to consider how you talk so that he understands you, see? You talk so that he can hear you. All right, the same. We have to consider other people, the other end. Always consider the other end. If everybody on this planet, consider the other end, then we will never have hunger, we will never have war, we could never kill anyone. How can anybody still kill anybody at this time of our civilization, this time of human's evolution? Still can somebody go out, get a gun and just kill somebody else just like that? in the name of whatever, huh? 
the name of religion, in the name of country, in the name of whatever. It's never right. It's never right. How can we do that? He's just like you. Right? Both I have to defend for their own country. And you kill him because he defends for his country. That's not right, is it? No. Or you kill him because he defends for his belief. That's not right, is it? Or you kill him because he doesn't want to believe what you believe. That's also not right, is it? Huh? It's not right. War is never right. Killing is never right. So if we all consider other people the way we consider ourselves, just put ourselves in their position, then perfectly we know what to do. Quý khán giả đáng ngưỡng mộ, cảm ơn quý vị cùng theo dõi chương trình hôm nay với tựa đề Sát sanh không bao giờ đúng, phần 1 của hai phần, trên giữa thầy và trò. Xin vui lòng giữ làn sóng truyền hình vô thượng sư để xem thêm nhiều chương trình khẳng định. Tiếp theo là triết lý khai ngộ của Sri Aurobindo về sự tiến hóa của nhân loại, phần 1 của hai phần, trên lời thánh khải. Cầu mong lối sống cao thượng của quý vị nở rộ trong tình thương mang lại vẻ đẹp và sự thiện lành đến thế giới chúng ta may your noble way of life blossom with love bringing beauty and goodness to our world for more details please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash bmt The middle way. The pendulum's swing returns to calm. The scale's arm settles into its balance. Wisdom emanates by its own perfection. A stable radiant shines henceforth. Original nature come the celestial harmonies, 
inner and outer journeys finally become steady. The middle way.